So, you had a bunch of rounds in Homefront, and I take it it's still full of campers? It's... I mean, it's still an issue. There are people who like to run and gun, but, you know, it's, it's still an issue. Yeah, you say it gives you a heavy Battlefield 2 vibe. Uh, basically, the way the vehicles are handled and how they, they like crash into each other and, and stuff, it feels very uh, Battlefield 2. I mean, uh, small pieces of them don't fall off like in Bad Company 2. They just go... So you could say it's sort of like the Battlefield 2 sequel one never got. That didn't really... I mean, it has the, the original devs, right? It's, no, uh, Chaos, who developed Homefront and Frontline's Field of War, were made up mostly of developers of the Battlefield 1942 mod, Desert Combat. And many of them also assisted DICE in work on Battlefield 2 before they were summarily fired by EA since they didn't want to move to Sweden to join DICE itself. Uh, the, the game crashed. <laughs> Welcome to Homefront. So, Seriously. after working on Battlefield 1942 Desert Combat and pitching in on Battlefield 2, they went off to form Chaos Studios, uh, where they basically made the UE3 mods that were uh, Frontline's Field of War and Homefront. And now they are no more. It's a sad well, Of course they're no more. I mean, but uh, THQ at least they're still bringing out DLC for Homefront. I mean, it could use the maps, but more often than not you see people just using um, Angels Island and Lowlands, which are basically sniping maps. So, you would say snipers are much more of a problem than in, say, no, Battlefield No, they, they did nerf them in a patch. I mean, and snipers still have the, uh, what's his name? I mean, more often than not, you can sneak up on a sniper, he will never see you coming because their scope really puts them at a risk because it has thermal. You have a tough time seeing people without the thermal. So when, so you have to look through the damn thing most of the time and you can just run up on them and knife them. Well, that sounds like a plus. But you say snipers yeah, are still a big problem even after they were nerfed in a patch? Sometimes, you could get like, um, if you get a nest of them, there's a whole bunch of them sometimes, they just start uh, picking off the whole place, especially if it's, um, what's his name, uh, ground control, because they can just focus on one area where everybody is going. <laughs> well, you said you often found that people would be camping uh, just two feet from a control point instead of capturing it. That yeah, that was the good. last game. That doesn't sound like how you're supposed what to play the game. What happened? I mean, you, you're supposed to capture the damn point. You're you're still stationary when you're uh, capturing it, so it it wouldn't make a difference. But you see, um, as a point is being captured, there's that meter that fills around it, right? So the other team would know that somebody's there. They would know the point is in jeopardy. Thus, it would give away the position of the camper. Ah. So, you know, for once, you could say we'd like to see a game which was like Call of Duty, or Homefront, really, which tries to be like Call of Duty, but also encourages movement instead of camping. Yeah, like, there, there's a whole bunch of simple ideas they could put in to just always have somebody on the move and still have fun, not worrying about a kill-death ratio or something. Well, they could not display kill-death ratios. That's a start. Well, yeah. Or they could make it easier to maintain a high kill-death ratio or something. But it's not all about that, is it? Well, it seems to me in these COD, Call of Duty type games, uh, the main problem is sort of the U-curve of weapon lethality where right up close you've got the knife and that's your instant kill and in Call of Duty even has the lunge which makes it doubly deadly. Oh, home front has the lunge too. Ah. And at long range you've got the sniper rifles which are really easy kills as well. 
often one hit or two hits. Um, and I mean, medium range if, if you got the, else. If you in home front, you don't really need the sniper most of the time. You just need that shotgun. The shotgun is a one hit kill. The distance does not vary. So it's shotgun but most of the time. Yeah. That doesn't help. I mean, you can even slap a scope on it, or some form of scope. That's hilarious. It's an ACOG, I think. An ACOG for a scope on my shotgun, huh? I mean, I think uh, Rainbow Six Vegas had something like that. That's true, but it was Rainbow Six Vegas. Uh, so, anyway, with that U-curve, uh, all the weapons in the middle just aren't as good, so... If you're close to someone, you knife them. Otherwise, the snipers also have an advantage. Yeah, and assault rifles, you could say, they, they got really long range. Or you end up with uh, assault rifles that are basically sniper rifles. Uh, a good example of this would be the AN-94 and Battlefield Bad Company 2, which is a two or three hit kill, and you can slap a 4x scope on it. I think I finally got into a game. Hooray. Now, uh, so if you want to discourage this sort of long-range sniping and camping, uh, what you could do is have a more linear weapon drop-off, where the knife is, and close-range weapons are still the most powerful, uh, if in fact all weapons should be extremely powerful at close range and all weapons should drop off drastically at long range. Now many games have this to a degree uh, Bad Company 2 has weapon drop off where they do less damage over range but that drop off itself is limited. They only drop off to a point. They don't drop off to nothing for example. Um, it might be a better idea to have weapons that simply do drop off to nothing, like they are simply useless or do only one damage at extreme ranges. And sniper rifles could be among them. You don't have the sniper rifles be the most powerful guns per hit. Uh, if you have I a think, sniper, uh, you have a sniper. Sure. Doesn't Arma have the, what's his name, accuracy thing, where it's like, um, basically bullet trajectory and all that stuff? Arma it models a few more things um, than most other games, but it's not that realistic by default. However, there are modifications to Arma, such as the famous Ace modification, which tend to um, make the windage and... Um, calculating the bullet drop and windage with the scope sights more important. So yes, Arma still occupies that sort of very uh, realistic part, end of the spectrum. Um, I think you could say Sniper Ghost Warrior as well as that uh, bullet trajectory thing going, but then you just get somebody running around with a pistol shooting everybody. <laughs> Yes. Um, Somebody just camping the spawn there. Well, there you go. Spawn so camping. They, so, yeah, it's a big problem here. Especially if they park up an APC next to the uh, spawn point. It's not pretty. Uh, so, what anti camper tools does Homefront give you? They, they have the threat priority thing where they mark an area where somebody is, is killing a lot of people. You can also buy the uh, scan for the area. Mm, that's a good idea. So threat priority uh, from playing the demo it seems to be like if you kill at least five people in a row without dying, you get marked as a priority threat. Um, it's a set number, I'm not sure how much, but basically the more people you kill after the, the threshold is, is passed, the more of a threat you become. Yes, and then it marks a sort of wide area and tells all the players in the opposing team that you're in it. And yeah. promises you um, an extra large XP bounty for killing you. 
Well, um, uh, let me think. Yeah, there's the XP bonus, and it also marks the area. But as well, it works on vehicles, which is useful. Mm -hmm. So it seems like that's a very good idea for reducing, um, well, uh, camping to the point where people get very high kill streaks, at least. Well, not not all the servers use it. That's the thing. I think it's either a mod or a mechanic that works in other modes. I'm not sure exactly how it's activated. Ah, uh, that's a downside. Yeah, to be Definitely. most useful, it should be universal. Um, it should be, but they don't want to. They want to like have everybody have it their own way, and sadly, not everybody wants to cater to everybody else. Mm -hmm. But that's a very good idea. I would say that. The idea that the more enemies you kill before dying means you're worth more in XP is an idea that every game uh, should take from this uh, as anti-camping and marking you as a priority threat and telling players within a certain area where you are is also a very good idea that game should take from this. Um, yeah. Um, Crisis 1 multiplayer for the few people who played it did something similar in that when players ranked up they were worth more XP for being killed and players and it was relative so players who were higher ranked than you you would get much more XP for killing them and players lower ranked than you you would get much less it didn't really fix the multiplayer in Crisis 1 in fact nothing did but it was a good idea I would say that it always you, works uh, I would say that if your game has Call of Duty style uh, persistent leveling, then maybe make that a multiplier as well. So someone who is level 40 uh, gets that much more XP uh, bounty for every person he kills.